And we're live. Hooray! Ooh. Video game Ooh. Christmas, boys. Ooh. Yeah. Who who got a who got a nice toy under their video game tree and who which one of you got a big lump of coal? Uh. I feel like Technically, none of us got anything under the tree because all we got were announcements saying, like, yeah, you'll get these games in, like, half a year. True. I feel like if you got an announcement that you wanted, that's, like, a, that's like a, a treat from, from, the, from the E3 fairy. From Gaming Santa? From Gaming Santa, yeah. And if, and if nothing was given to you, then you got a big lump of coal because you were a bad boy since last E3. A good point. This... Just yeah. too much responsibility for E3 to have. I'm just yeah. going to go out on a limb and just say that. True. Uh, I'll say for myself, uh, I got a big old shiny new bike. Nice. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was well, under my video game tree. Wow, okay. Cool. Uh, I got a video game, so I don't know if I got scammed or not, because, man, I could have had a new bike. <laughs> yeah. New bike, yeah. That's, Definitely yeah. scammed. I'll, Oh, what did you get? I don't know. I got like this pack of socks. It's kind of cool, I guess. Okay. Black socks. <laughs> I feel like uh, in, in, if I'm following this metaphor correctly that I came up with, so hopefully I am. Uh -huh. Pack of socks is like the Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> hey. <laughs> <Video games. laughs> wow. Wow. Well, I'm just trying to think. It's for, it, But I mean that in the best way. It's for like a refined a refined taste it's the gentleman's game uh -huh. the gentleman's <laughs> gift is yeah is socks yeah um and they did show microsoft flight similar is coming to console in like a month or two so but that just works already out already is <laughs> not on console it's just pc no flight sims on xbox i don't believe microsoft flight simulator the most recent one is on yes. the xbox Yes, because I remember being able to buy a physical copy, which was just the download code. <laughs> hmm. Awesome. Well, <laughs> send me a store page, and I will I will admit defeat. I thought their trailer was even like July, like it's it said July. <laughs> um, See, I saw that too on their list. I'm like, wait a minute, no, that's already out. What are they talking about? Well, it is out on PC. I mean, we went through Paul and I went through this like last year, Microsoft, two years ago. Windows Series X, Series S, and Open XR, whatever Open XR is. That's the next one. <laughs> <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't announced yet. <laughs> Microsoft Series OXR. I have no idea what that is. <clears throat> Interesting. Maybe I am actually wrong because I don't see the Xbox One list here. Maybe you dreamed it. Maybe you were really hoping that you wake weird up. Weird dream. You went to bed on E3 Eve, and you're like, please, Gaming Santa, bring me Microsoft Flight Simulator on Xbox. And, you, and then you had a dream during the night. Apparently, I changed, apparently I'm wrong. No. Yeah, yes, King of E3, yeah, King of E3 it's, right it's here. not launching on Xbox One. Looks like I am incorrect. Yep. Weird, I swear. I'm that the captain now. Weird. I'm the captain now. <clears throat> um all right well if you haven't guessed this is the top down perspective uh for june 17th i'm sean booker i'm paul fleck i'm john wheeler um and the biggest thing that happened in the last week will be talked about momentarily because paul did you watch loki episode two i did man it's a good episode it was so good i loved it it was a good episode yeah i i love that it has turned into this buddy cop drama yeah between owen wilson and uh and loki and it's uh, tom hiddleston and it is so great i love their dynamic um fun twists just a really great episode oh oh my gosh i loved it so much yeah tom hiddleston seems like he is having so much fun in the role just being a, a wacky weird dude yeah i, and, I agree and that makes that makes me happy so yeah that was really great um i was also reminded that tomorrow we get a brand new Pixar movie on Disney Plus with Luca. Oh. Yeah, okay. right? Yeah. It just no, kind of came I out of nowhere. Remember, didn't remember that at all. Okay. Well, there's your there's your movie Christmas. You get a, a new Pixar <laughs> out of nowhere. How often does that happen? 
Uh, at least yearly. I don't really keep up with uh, Pixar releases, so every year I'm like, oh, right, that's a thing. And that's usually... Oh, okay, uh, well, I mean, that's pretty great. Luca comes out tomorrow. I'm looking forward to watching that. I mean, that. real Christmas comes once a year as well, just for the record. So. That's true. That's true. And last Christmas, we got Soul. So that was, that was a Pixar movie on Christmas, mm. which is Inception. Yeah, I've lost this analogy that a while ago. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, did I say this is the top down perspective? I did. Yeah. Um, we already said our names. I, we did say our names. Okay. Uh, Paul, what have you been playing? Uh, yeah. I guess, like, not a whole hell of a lot. I'm closer to ending near in that I've finished two endings. Um, so, you know, that's going. The other game I just started playing the other day. Is Mario and Rabbids because it's like ten bucks Canadian on the eShop right now. So, first of all, if you haven't gotten that yet, just like it's on a huge sale right now, and that's pretty fun. It's a pretty fun game. You not played it before? Game. No, because there's no way I was spending like eighty dollars on a Rabbid game. That's fucking crazy. To be fair <laughs> though, this is the best Rabbid game. That's still, yeah, you're right. It is, but it's a easy um thing to make i think i love that game it's probably one of my favorite switch games wow okay <laughs> damn um, okay yeah that's... well if i'm talking like if i'm talking like switch exclusives okay i would pro i would probably put that in my top five of switch exclusives oh wow okay sure i mean i could see it it's like if you like tactics games it's definitely probably one of the best on there for sure it's really good yeah yeah uh that game is really fun i mm -hmm. guess i was a little uh excited to see just how like it's really streamlined in like how the tactics part plays but it's also kind of different in the whole like you can do an attack while you're moving and then like move into cover and do like it's very mobile i guess is the word i would use your characters are like consistently doing things to just like move around that environment in ways that you don't usually see in tactics games i think that's pretty cool sure. so yeah it's, yeah pretty refreshing i also recommend i don't know if it's part of the sale but if the donkey kong dlc is also on sale you should grab that uh because it's also really good i believe you, it you is. Know, you play, yeah i would recommend picking that up as well to play when you're done um because uh, he's a fun character to to play, and he gets it's like a mini campaign, so it's all new levels and stuff. Sure, cool. Uh, so yeah, that's basically all I've been playing though. Okay, uh, John, we've been playing the the hottest new game. Let's talk about some Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. All right, yeah. How far are you in the game so far? I'm not because w w I started playing the. the two of the hot new ps5 exclusive releases and then when i looked at the how long oh. to beat i was like oh this other one's really short i can just bang that out but i would say i'm probably two hours two three hours into it okay so you're <clears throat> you're probably in uh, that swamp area no <laughs> went to a nightclub and I did some stuff after the nightclub, and I think oh, I stopped pretty oh, quick. Oh, okay, that. that's where you are. Okay. Yeah. So no, you you yeah, you still got a ways to go. Yep. Oh, I'm I I'm nowhere near the end. I I understand that. Well, um, no, no, no. I mean, like to, from where I'm talking about. Oh, I see to the swamp. Okay. Um, yeah. I will say that intro is awesome. Like it is so fun. You're doing such cool stuff. Up up until like the up the title card. I I was literally just like had a big smile on my face the whole time. Um, that game, it runs great. It looks so good. Um, yeah, looks really nice. Yeah, I'm assuming I'm assuming you're playing on like performance mode. Whatever the default is, which I assume is performance. I actually don't remember what the default is. I always switch it to the 4K mode where that brings it down to 30 frames per second. Mm. And I usually do that because, like, as much as nice as 30 frames per second is, I feel like a lot of games lately, when you're picking your mode, they'll be like, hey, if you if you go to 60 frames a second, we're going to turn off stuff like ray tracing and other visual effects. And it's like, no, I really want that stuff. So I guess I'll just keep the locked 30 and get the 4K resolution with all the bells and whistles. But I don't remember what the default is. 
I think that is what the default is, like the 30 FPS, but like all the features are on. Okay. Okay. Then you, but you, so do you have a 4K TV? No. So you might want to switch it to performance because right now you're not getting kind of any, anything of the, of the bonus features, right? Uh, no, it still does ray tracing and stuff. I guess it would still do ray tracing. Okay. And there's also one in between, I think, where it does 60 and then it does. Yeah, 660, but it turns off ray tracing. And then I forget what the other one is. Yeah, there's there's like a middle ground one and, and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't know. What do you think of it? So far, I like it. I have a couple complaints. Nothing too major, though. Uh, my issue is the double jump keeps accidentally activating or like not activating rather. And it keeps getting me killed. Oh, weird. I have not had that. Yeah. So like there's points where I'd start exploring. I would try to do the double jump and then instead it would do the hover instead. And that would eat up my second jump. Oh, so it's like you're trying, like, it's doing the hover on your first jump, so you don't yes. get that second jump. Oh, it's it's yeah. almost like you're, it's almost like the buttons like getting stuck down, kind of. Yeah, so like I'm holding it to try to get height off the jump, but it ends up doing that eats like, do, just activates the hover instead of giving you the second jump or letting. Oh, well, okay. I, I do know if you just press and hold it, it's going to do the the boots. So I mean, you might yeah, be doing no, that, no, holding yeah, it I'm, too long. Like, it's like it's kicking in early. It's kicking in when I don't want it to, so it's eating. I've I've more or less like started like easing off and how i press it but every now and then it'll still happen out of pure habit because it's not like other games that i'm used to okay yeah i don't think you get like i don't think there's any reason to hold down the jump to try and get a higher jump i don't think that's a mechanic in this game not sure i don't remember if there's variable heights in the jumps or not but yeah no it, have to, have that, was, that was that was the thing in the beginning when i was just trying to explore around it was getting annoying like, oh, I want to get this gold bolt. Oh, I keep accidentally not using my second jump, so I can't make this jump. Stuff like that. I also keep having random glitches happen, which at this point I'm just assuming is just an insomniac thing, because that's what happened with Spider-Man as well. Yeah, I have heard of a few other people talking about glitches. I haven't seen anything like major popping up on Twitter, but just other podcasts mentioning a few, few little glitches here and there. I personally haven't gotten any, but a guy I haven't played a ton of hours into it so I'm, I'm sure they're coming yeah i'm i think because uh, an update forced my game to shut down uh i load up my file i think i'm about halfway through the or sorry a third through the game i'm at 34 percent or something like that okay probably more now because i finished a major story beat before i came down here yeah the map's actually really good for like pointing out all the collectibles so it sounds like it's a pretty easy like 100 percent to get because yeah, that map is no, so useful been... Nothing's been so hard to find so far, but you need to like at least be in the area to get it to highlight on your map. Yeah, it's yeah, but so far it's been it's been pretty good. Nothing too challenging. Combat's fun. It's it's a Ratchet and Clank game. If you like a Ratchet and Clank, you'll love this game. That's just the way it works. It's a good Ratchet and Clank game. Yeah, no, we should definitely talk about the combat because I feel like that's kind of where a lot of the um, the warping around comes into play, and that's pretty fun. Mm -hmm. So you get you have a grappling hook in this one, and there will be these like yellow kind of like circular cracks throughout the field and they show up in like platforming areas as well but if you just hit like l1 while you're like looking at it and it'll like highlight if you if you're focused enough on it then you'll just warp over there like instantly and that can be just like a blast warping around the uh field I, you can use it to like avoid attacks as well i have not used it in combat at all Oh, the very first boss I was using it because it would have like kind of like a sweeping laser attack that you that you could have jumped yeah. over. But I, I was just, just like, oh, I'm I just going to warp over side. over that. Yeah, <laughs> there's different See, options. I, I know. I know at some point in this game, there's going to be like, you you better do this in combat. But right now, it's just been like a nice fluff thing at this point. But it's a cool feature. Like, it's really cool, like opening up a rift and being like, oh, shit. Like, I'm just I'm just there now. That's cool. Like, technologically, yeah. it's super impressive, but. Like, it is. even, even combat, the game like, oh that's neat i'll just use my gun even the game's just loading is is real fast from like the dashboard to playing the game it's like yeah. five seconds like Jumping it loads planets is extremely fast yeah it, it's pretty impressive like it's a xbox has their quick resume this is like it almost doesn't need the quick resume because it loads so fast it doesn't even matter so it's kind yeah. of like a weird workaround that sony uh was able to come up with which is which is definitely real cool 
Yeah, no, that, the game's been fun. I'm on... I just finished Planet 4, I believe. And uh, I'm going to Planet 5 now, so... I'm excited right to play more of that. That's definitely been my, like, relaxing game. The controller is pretty cool. Lots oh, of vibrating man. going on. Yeah, um, dude, th- I love the way this game uses the adaptive triggers. This is this is the game that's kind of sold me on adaptive triggers because it's like, oh, yeah, if you hold it halfway, like, you'll get, like, a certain ability, but then if you pull it fully, you'll do- get, like, extra shots or, like, you'll get faster throws and stuff like that with some of the weapons. It's actually been really cool. Yeah, all the guns kind of have two firing modes. Um, I've actually, you know, when it comes to the combat with the adaptive triggers, I I haven't really gotten to the point where I'm, like, like, I feel like I never really want the 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 half press. Mm. Like, I'm just pressing it fully the whole time. Like, I think of, like, the shotgun. It's, I like So the way the shotgun works, if you, if you do a half press, it'll sh- it's like a double-barreled shotgun. It'll shoot one of them. If you press the full thing, it'll just unload both of them right away. Yeah. I pretty much never just want the one shot. Um, your pistol, which is, like, weirdly powerful. That's your first gun you get, so it's, like, the highest upgraded one I have. It'll just start shooting faster. Um, when you yeah. like hold it down, so it's like, of course, I want that as well. So I, I haven't really found a good reason to ever do the half press. The um, the grenades, anything grenade type. So like the, uh, I forget what they're called. Like they're not scatter shot or something like scatter boom. I think is what it's called. Uh, that one's great because that half trigger it gives you like an aiming arc, so you know exactly where your shot's going, and then you pull the full to just start whipping them. Stuff like that. That's true. Yeah, the grenades you get the targeting. Same with the um. The Mister Fungi, I Mr. think. Fungi, yeah. It's another throwing the one. Mister Zircon to do. replacement in this one. <clears throat> right. Yeah. Um, but the the vibrations real cool. I mentioned that the the nightclub. As you like, so the city's pretty fun to kind of walk around in. And, and I was in a pretty small city area, but as I got closer to the nightclub, the like controller would like begin to vibrate more and more with the beat as the music was picking up, and that was just yeah. like a fun kind of immersive little twist. I'm really excited to see what other kind of things they're going to do with that. Yeah, no, it's it's been fun. This is one like the only annoyance I have I, I debated was like turning off the audio, but I feel like some of the audio was fun to hear out of the controller. Because I, just, I, don't, I, I can't like, remember any of the audio. What what is some of the stuff that comes out like of the There's all like little things like based on your gun, you like you'll hear like charging up or like signals for like when your gun is ready to fire again. Like, you know, with the with the shotgun, I think it like clicks when it's ready to fire again in your controller. Oh, OK, OK, stuff, little things like that. I feel like I never remember that stuff because so often I'm playing with headphones in and mm. then they turn that mic off, the, that uh, speaker off. So I miss out on a lot of that stuff a lot of the time. Gotcha. Yeah, no, that would do it. No, it, they Insomniac definitely knows how to use that, those features on that system and that controller. So and it kind of shows. Yeah, not that there's like a ton of PS5 exclusives, but like, honestly, even just the bit I played and kind of mm. seeing all the great press this game is getting. This seems like if you have a PS5, you got to get this game. Like, it's just so I do, good. I do feel bad that this came out right before E3 because I feel like all the discourse on the Internet has kind of ignored it because of that. I've barely seen anyone talking about it because everyone's been too busy talking about E3 itself. Yeah, after that first week. That's true. Yeah, I mean. It's just a weird window. Imagine if this was like a launch game, though. And I bet in another universe of where COVID didn't happen, this probably like was a launch game. That would have been that would have been bananas crazy. That would have been so that awesome. Been crazy having like two Insomniac games at launch, like both Miles Morales and this. Even though this would, is only that, like what, like eight months off, six months? No, you're right. Off of That's launch? true. It would have been weird. That would. I'm trying to think of like any other time that happened, and it was like Rare putting out Viva Pinata two and. Andrew Kazooie nuts and bolts on the same day. <laughs> Remember when that happened? What a weird thing. Yeah, didn't yeah. like like a bunch of years back didn't the infamous launch also <clears throat> right before E3, one of the infamouses? And that one got ignored Probably. basically because it's some something like that. Maybe, yeah, it's been a while. I don't fully remember the infamous launches. Um But yeah, no, I'm definitely looking uh real forward to playing more of that. You you play anything else? Um, just across. Still working through S6. Uh, I I'm a little mad at my PS5 right now though. So, uh, installing Ratchet and Clank. This was the first time I had to actually delete anything off of my PS5's hard drive. It, sure. it actually ran out of space. So I moved any PS4 stuff that I had on there onto an external. But in the process of doing that, uh, it misplaced 20 gigs worth of data. I don't know what you mean misplaced. 
Yeah. So, uh, I moved, I think it was persona five strikers, the, the data for the PS4 game for that. I've tried to move it to the external, uh, on the external, it says there is zero kilobytes of persona five strikers on there. And if I try to delete it or move it, it says, uh, something went wrong. When I go to my PS5 hard drive, it says there are 20 gigs of content of Persona 5 Strikers on there, but when I try to delete it or move it, it says something went wrong. So there's just 20 gigs of my PS5 hard drive I just cannot access. The error code it gives me, no one has seen before. <laughs> oh, weird. And you can't delete it? No, I can't. I can't delete it. I can't move it. The only thing I haven't tried at this point is putting in Persona 5 Strikers in to see what happens. And at this point, that might be the only solution. Yeah, but I'm know. afraid of it again reinstalling the game and losing another 20 gigs. So, yeah, I mean, like, at what point do you have to just like r wipe the the PS5's hard drive? Yeah, which I mean, you have cloud saves, so it's not like you'll lose any of your game progress, but it's just yeah, you'll have to download a bunch sucks. of stuff, like a few hundred it's gigs so of stuff again. Yeah, yeah, I definitely deleted some stuff to get to fill the uh, to get the. My, my games this week on the hard drive but that was fine because there was a lot of stuff that i was like hey maybe i'll get to this i doubt i'm gonna get to it like just cause four and stuff like that yeah no well yeah we'll see that's i think that's the most i've used my ps5 in a while other than a dvd player right yeah no this last week is the most i've definitely been using my ps5 there hasn't been a lot out for the ps5 but um true oh well, what's the next big release for either of them i guess for either console, the next big release. I don't know, Paul, do you know? No, I don't. No. Big release. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there's been any. I don't think there's anything for the next couple months. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll get to it as we're going through some of our E3 news, at least for Xbox. But I mean, we're not going to have like any Sony news. Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that. But. Uh, if we talk about my second game, because Sony did put out two exclusives oh, last right. Friday. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Inner Grade came out. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that no one is talking about this, considering how big Final Fantasy VII Remake was and how big a deal that was when that came out. Yeah, because um, it kind of just came and went. Because everyone was excited about it last year. They get, a bunch of people gave it Game of the Year or like close to. And then they're just like, all right, yeah, we're done. It's just like, like, how long is the, the content they added in the, okay, inter so the actual integrate part? Integrate is about six hours on average. Uh, you could probably oh, finish long, it in. Huh? You could probably finish it in five. Um, I think if you were to do everything, I don't know exactly all I missed. So I did everything I could find, except there's a summon battle with Chadley that I did not complete uh, because I thought I would have a chance to later on. And so so PSA pro tip um uh intergrade has two chapters in it do the summon battle before the end of the first chapter um because chadley does not show up in the second one i i was hoping he would so that i could uh take on that summoning battle with like my strongest party he did not so that's a bummer um but uh anyways yeah uh Nerf's mentioning in the chat integrate is ps5 exclusive so that might be why a lot less people are talking about it i still just feel that it's kind of the next chapter and story beats for the remake and remake was huge that i would have i would have thought i would have had more people talking about it in some capacity but i've heard like nothing kind of on twitter the, no one the I'm... only thing i've heard people say about integrate is the fact that they fixed that door texture to tifa's apartment that's actually neat. that's actually neat. i did see those you're no you're right i did see those like i think kotaku had an article or something about that yeah that's the only thing i've seen anyone talking about it no <laughs> one i've seen talk about the content of it or anything like that it's just been making fun of the fact that they fixed the door texture well allow me to talk about some of the content of final fantasy 7 remake integrate for you all right so it's uh again i don't know how much is um, uh american i think it's 20 bucks american but it is 27 canadian because my PlayStation is stuck in Canada dollars for eternity, it sounds like. About five to seven hours of content. One of the like side quests is a mini game that they put in there that is basically Clash Royale, and you go around to almost all of the major characters from Seven Remake, excluding the main party. But like Jesse and, and Biggs 
and you play this game with them and you like get more units to put in your board and and so I did that and I beat the Grand Master and yada yada. So that was kind of fun. This takes place in terms of the Final Fantasy VII story arc kind of in the middle of of remake you're you play yuffie and a new character sonin and they're in the background so you do see like like you're in the slums and you'll see tifa and barrett coming back right when they lost cloud when he like separated from them and fell and met Aerith. and you see tifa like going off because she has a, a plan of uh, how she's gonna take advantage and help things out over in wall market so you kind of see some behind the scenes things that you didn't see in seven while you're kind of in the background observing some of these things. So it's kind of fun getting to see different perspective and angles of the things that were going on. Yuffie's all right. She actually plays really fun. They added a new mechanic to the combat where if you hit the L2, you'll have synchronous attacks where both the characters will fight together and which is really helpful when you're doing like when you've staggered the enemy and you're like, we need to do a bunch of damage right now. Um, the drawback to that, though, is the second character, Sonin, his ATB gauge will go up slower. So you don't want to be in it all the time because you won't be able to do any special abilities with him. Um, there's brand new materia. There's, you know, there's a bunch of like steel related ones, which I kind of just ignored because as someone who plays RPGs, I feel like stealing is never useful ever. Um, however, I did notice when I was doing, when I was using like assess on different bosses, some of them are like, Hey, if you steal this thing, when the boss is in this mode, it'll like stun them immediately. So there actually is a reason to use steel. Um, but I just didn't set up my characters to do that. And I wasn't going to change kind of midway through this, but that might be something you want to play around with. Uh, if, if that does uh, seem enticing to you, um, <clears throat> Yuffie and Sonin are from the Wutai, uh, region there's this weird little gag where they bring these like these like beans or these nuts from their hometown and they're like oh hey thank you so much here's a nut but whenever someone bites it it like breaks their teeth but yuffie and sonin can eat them just fine and they're just like making fun of the people's jaws in midgar um it's goofy it's it's as, it's funny like you would expect final fantasy 7 remake to be there's a side quest involving this bar called the happy turtle where you need to find posters for the happy turtle. Um, and they're, they're signified by a song being played and they made this happy turtle song in like seven different genres. Every time you find a new poster, it's going to be a new version of the song and they range from like acapella to metal. And it's, it's silly and bizarre and it, it's just a good time. I actually really enjoyed my time with integrate. I thought it looked great. Uh, I will say it's in like the two most boring areas of Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's the slums, which is just kind of like a boring brown, kind of ugly looking area. And then it's a Shinra building. So it's just kind of like a, a black and dark blue industrial area. You don't get any of the like nice bright colors from Wall Market or um, <clears throat> or like the uh, the train graveyard with all the nice, you know, HDR effects on the ghosts and stuff like that. So unfortunately, it's not the most exciting areas that they could have done. Um, but this is just a small thing. And I will say at the end of it, there's a big long cutscene. It involves, um, it involves some care. I'll, I'm not going to spoil anything, but I'll just kind of tease you. There's some characters that pop up that are from other Final Fantasy VII properties that I guess are now part of this game. So that's kind of fun. And it also shows kind of wet cloud and them are up to. So there is a continuation of that story as well. So if you're into that story, which I'm, I, there's no reason to play integrated for not, you'll kind of get some like main story beats as well, not just side stuff all the time. Um, I, I will say if, if you enjoyed seven remake and are invested in that, you'll definitely want to play this and, and you'll have a good time with this for sure. Um, but yeah, those were the two games I played. Those were the big PS5 exclusives. <clears throat> Why don't we talk about E3? What's yeah, that? Paul, did you not play anything? Yeah, I started. Oh, because your list was empty. That's why I double checked. I'm like, wait. Yeah, he talked right. about rabbits at the beginning, remember? Yeah, yeah. sorry. I, just, I noticed it wasn't there, so that's why I, I did a double check. 
Yeah, no, that's fine. I appreciate you caring enough to double check. Thank you. You're um, welcome. Okay, so in our doc, I just kind of put down the conferences I watched. Paul, I'm assuming you watched more than I did. I watched everything except for apparently this NFT thing that I missed out and people were just like, what do you think about that? I'm like, what Dunking the on? fuck are you talking about? <laughs> were you talking about with the little figures? Something like that, yeah. Apparently you can like, they did some weird gross monetization thing. So I missed that. And that's too bad, because that sounds like that would have been fun to talk about, but I have no idea what that's about. I, oh, people are called, were called Blancos. Yes, which, that's, that's right. That's a perfect name for something that sounds lame. That's right, yep. Uh, <laughs> so, I unfortunately uh, know I nothing about even that. Watched, I even watched some of the Take Two panel on inclusivity in video games, thinking they were going to have some trailers or announcements and stuff. Oh, yeah, Before I, I realized, it. oh, I don't need to cover this for work. <laughs> yeah, I skipped that. Um, okay, well, uh, then if there's more that you want to add, feel free to jump in with more stuff. Otherwise, I'm just going to go through the things that I, I put in the doc here. Okay. Um, but before that, we sh uh, we we wanted okay. to do some top five stuff. Uh, so why don't we get that stuff out of the way? Um, a li little more kind of exciting as we, before we do the news roundup. So I, uh, the, the three of us put together a top five list each of games uh, that we saw at E3 that we were most excited for. I was yeah. telling John before this... I tried exclusively to pick games that I didn't know about. Otherwise, it would have just been like, oh, of course I'm excited for this thing. You know I'm excited for 12 minutes. Why? What's the point of even mentioning it? It's fine if you guys did, for the record. Yeah, yeah. I wrote down six, but one of them was already known, so I have five. Um, sure. I, I didn't know how we were going about this, so I could do... I did five that I was stoked about, but then I also did ones that are just like... But I didn't know about this, so like, is that more important in some way? And so I added those as well. And okay, yeah, you can share whatever you want, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I, I'm just kind of giving a baseline. John, why don't you start us off with your five or six games that you saw in the last week that uh, that get you going, that excite you? Mm. All right. So yeah, I'll. Uh, these are in no particular order. Uh, yeah, we didn't so rank one these. of the one. Yeah, the one that I did know about and I'm excited for was Psychonauts 2. It was nice to see more sure. footage of that. Curious to see how that's going to be when it comes out. That would be uh, X and, my Xbox's first exclusive. That's in August. Oh, is that actually that soon? Okay, perfect. Actually, there hang on. Go. That's not an exclusive. Xbox just owns them, but that that is not an exclusive. <laughs> so that doesn't that doesn't count. Never mind. All right, never mind. <laughs> uh, Mario and Rabbids sparks of hope. Get seen that Mario and Rabbids got a sequel it was actually really cool. So I'm excited for that. Yes, that uh, that's on my list as well. I. I really wished that hadn't leaked right before the Ubisoft press conference because that would have been such a fun. It was at the very end, such a fun surprise. Yeah, that if that had come I, out of nowhere, I saw some random rumor going around saying that some people think Nintendo leaked it on purpose because uh, Ubisoft leaked it, the original one before their conference or something like that. I don't know if that's true. No. That would be really funny and really spidey if that was the case. That though. would be there's. Yeah. There is absolutely no way they would do that. Like, what, what do they get out of that besides harming the relationship that makes them millions of dollars? Yeah, yeah there's no way. It's still, it's still funny, though. It's still yeah. funny. Funny to think about. Paul, I'm assuming this is why you started Mario and Rabbids. No, I literally started Mario and Rabbids because it was ten dollars on the eShop. Like, it was a good price. <laughs> OK, did you did you buy it and start it before the announcement? No but he just had a feeling. Okay. Yeah. No, again, I've been wanting to play the game just like for a price that I was comfortable with. And that sure. was more than comfortable with that one. Uh, WarioWare, get it together. So a new WarioWare game. This is also on my list. Hell yeah. yeah WarioWare. I'm, um, I'm a little concerned about this one though. Cause it looks very slow paced compared to the other ones because of the way you move around on the screen. So I'm curious how this is going to be. I'm also wondering how motion control focused it's going to be if or if it's not i don't know because when it because it's cut it out together right or is it just cut it out it's just called cut it out or sorry it's but called it has, get it together it's called get, get, it, it, sorry, together. It's get it together i'm it's not cut it yeah right get it together but that has the joy cons clips. you're thinking super clips i'm thinking it's super clips. the warrior Wear has the joy cons in the logo and i'm really hoping i don't oh. have to like we play it to be fair though warrior wear smooth moves for the wii is fantastic pretty good yeah so maybe i shouldn't be worried 
Uh, Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp. The fact that Advance Wars is back was a big surprise. And that it's way forward working on it. That was neat. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, no surprise. Okay, this Apparently is actually different... also on my list, but I promise you the next two games will not be on John's list. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, apparently, this has one to four player online multiplayer as well. So, yep. which is really good. Yeah. Uh, also a Metroid Dread. Mode in some way. Yeah. yeah, Metroid Dread. Metroid Dread Thank is God like the this. top of mine for sure. Yeah. yeah. An actual brand new 2D Metroid. Yep. Uh, so when we were talking last week with people and they, everyone had like a 2D Metroid in their in their guess for what was going to come, I like I completely was like, no, there's no way. Same. But I'd also forgot. I think Mercury Steam had been confirmed to be working on another Metroid project uh, project, and they were the ones that did that remake of Samus Returns. So actually, I felt a little stupid when it got announced. I'm like, oh, right. Guess uh, I actually should have saw this coming. I don't think I knew about that at all. I didn't know that they were confirmed to be making one. Yeah, I, I think, know, I I think it was. I think it's rumor has it like one of those. Uh, one of those kind of confirmed. Yeah, I feel like yeah. if I would have, uh, I would have heard some kind of terminology on Twitter, people being like, "Well, they had announced this or said they were working on something." So I don't. <laughs> so it may have just been rumors. Um, yeah. But I yes, I totally agree. Last week, I specifically said I'd be surprised if they are working on two Metroid games at the same time. Yep. And here you go. Turns out they are. Uh, yeah, and this is here's the, the crazy thing is that this was supposed to be a DS game. So now that we're getting it on the Switch, that's just fucking bonkers. Yep. I like that they started it off and just said Metroid 5. Um, yep. Well, it's because the 2D ones are all the numerical ones. They're, yeah, they're I, actual canon. I didn't know that. Um, and then, so question for you guys. There was, there's been um, interviews uh, with the director since it was announced, and he has says this is the end of the Metroid Samus story. No, okay. I think he said this is the end of the Metroid story as it currently is. Like, it's about the Metroids themselves. So I think from here on out, if they do other Metroid games, they're going to not be focused on the Metroids. Okay. What does that mean for Prime 4, though? Prime's its own thing. <laughs> so Prime isn't Prime technically isn't canon. Like, they, it's like a side story. Oh, weird. Okay. So even though Prime might have Metroids... It's, they're still saying that's not part of the Metroid story. Yeah, like the, the the Prime games are usually all like at least the first three were all before like even Super Metroid or I think even maybe Metroid One. Like they're in they're in weird spots in the timeline basically, so they're just kind of like yeah no they're there that that's Samus doing other stuff and then they're just gonna Prime use is, those to flesh Prime out the Galactic the Federation where, and stuff. Prime's the timeline where if Ganondorf had won, then yeah. Prime's happens and okay right. I get it. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, Prime takes place between one and two. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they're gonna. Like, this is just the end of the. I think he said specifically the story arc for this part. So like, this just means like after this, like she's not gonna have to worry about either the Federation or Metroids or both. So I think they've also said that like the SAX or sorry the X Parasite is back in this one, and that was basically the main focus of Metroid Fusion. So. Okay, I haven't played either of those, so I will take your word for it. Uh, and, uh, so make sure not everything on my list was Nintendo, uh, fucking limited run announced plumbers don't wear ties is getting a re-release. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that is super weird. I don't know what this is. So this is an FMV game that was on the 3DO. That's very, okay. very cheap looking. I think it was actually still images, not actual footage for the most part. Uh, so but it's, it's not an amazing. FMV game. It's an FMP game because they're just pictures. Yeah, kind of. Basically. Yeah. Okay. It okay. it it's very stupid, very very Actually, rare and expensive, very dumb. But like the fact that it's getting a re-release of all things on like all modern consoles is just so chaotically stupid. I'm actually kind of excited for it. Actually, FMP wouldn't work either because M stands for just say motion. FMJPEG. FMJPEG. It's just like a, a, is it a, it's a comic book. There, yeah, there, there is a little it's bit a of footage, moving footage in it, but the majority of it is like still images talked over. Yeah. Okay. There's also actual nudity in the game, so I'm not sure how they're getting around that. Hell yeah. Just by making everything bigger. Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> Zoom in, God baby. For that. Mm -hmm. no, I don't know. No, that, that, that's Switch pretty much Pro, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, no, like most of the stuff I was excited about was all pretty much in Nintendo, with the exception of Psychonauts and Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Like it was 
this was kind of a meh E3 for me. I really wasn't even excited until like Nintendo. And even then I even went into Nintendo being like, I'm not going to be excited. No, because I figured this was the week. pandemic year. I wasn't expecting much. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is definitely the pandemic year. Um, a lot's coming out next year. I feel like we're going to get a huge flood yeah. of games uh, yeah. next year. Uh, yeah, I mean, you need to look at like sites that have like all the stuff listed that was revealed. Like there's a lot of stuff is coming out. It's yeah. just didn't didn't feel impactful, if that makes sense. Hearing that you weren't that excited until Nintendo does not surprise me. Yeah, that did seem to be the general consensus. A lot of people got mad at a lot of the conferences from what I saw. I mean, I will say uh, I really enjoyed Xboxes because like mm. almost all those games said coming to Game Pass day one. And like, yeah. that's a bunch of free games for me. So how can I not get excited? 27 about that? out of 30 games. <clears throat> that's what they said. Yep. 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 Jesus. Um, uh yeah i mean so like the ones that i've listed here the conferences i have xbox ubisoft evolver square enix uh nintendo i did watch capcom there's no reason to talk about the there capcom conference exactly yeah, yeah. that was um, infuriating what a waste of time that that and square enix it was just like this is what is what are we watching like no i had some I, fun I, with square i disagree Okay, well, we'll get to that. I think but, you may be the only one on the internet, Paul. I hate to yeah, tell you this. You're just I'm, a big uh, Guardians I'm also of the Galaxy not, fan. I don't guess. expect, like, things, I guess. That, like, I don't care what Square and Ub Ubisoft have. So if there's anything, then it's a home run for me. Sure, that's a good way to get into it. Um, but uh, either way, I, I, Ubisoft they had some stuff. Um, there's a lot of stuff in Ubisoft I'm going to play. Um yeah, maybe I'm not super excited for it, but there's a lot I'm going to play. Um, Paul, give us your list. Your I mean, Metroid. Yeah, I changed it up, actually. So I'm just going to talk about stuff that like I either didn't know about or kind of got me on their side. Metroid Dread was like the biggest one of the biggest things for me, for sure. That was as soon as I saw that, I just like shat my pants, basically. Um, mm -hmm. Another one. Oh. Outer Wild uh, Outer Worlds 2. <laughs> Yeah, that came out of nowhere. It almost seems like it's awesome. too soon. It's way too soon. That's why, I, like, so, as soon as that started, I'm just like, oh, this is a weird parody thing. And there's like, there's no way they would do Outer Worlds 2, right? Then you see that stupid face of the mascot. And I was just like, what? <laughs> Honestly, like, we just got that expansion, like, two months ago or yeah. something. Yep. Um, we had an expansion before that. Like, I feel like I've had a solid kind of drip feed of, of outer worlds the fact that they have like enough content for another one right off the bat like hell yeah i Crazy. love just being in that world let's go yeah i was super stoked about that did not see that coming also they kind of didn't show anything at all about it so i'm still cautiously optimistic though about it um yeah that one screamed still very early in development yeah <laughs> that was the whole like that was the gag about the yeah. trailer yeah so yeah yeah um, I really enjoyed what I saw from Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna okay. have fun with that quite a bit. Honestly, I'm, I'm surprised you said that because I feel like I've only heard people shit talking it. Maybe because it was like a 20 minute long presentation. I, it was mainly because of how long the presentation was. It was, was. real long. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, just kind of everyone's coming off Avengers, really upset. Um, same, that's, you know, same company or publisher, I should say. That's what excited um, me about it is, um, I've I've been talk like I've been hearing people talk about Mass Effect because of the legendary edition. And I remember one of the things I really like about Mass Effect is doing kind of the squad things and like setting up a real cool like kill combo essentially during a firefight. And there's like a lot of Mass Effect DNA I saw in what they showed with Guardians with like the different <clears throat> dialogue options. I thought the writing was pretty spot on for those characters. Uh I liked what I saw from the like it's a single player narrative game where you control everybody in the party during the fight. Like it's basically ticking all of the check boxes that I want after Marvel's like just just Marvel's Avengers like destroyed me. <laughs> yeah. I honestly I thought it looked good. Um yeah. I, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think Avengers just kind of burned me, so I'm a little I'm a little hesitant to be like full on in. I need to look up who the developer is actually because uh, I don't think it's uh, Crystal Dynamics. It's not. Crystal. It's not. No, it's I Eidos Montreal. On. I'm on it. You're there right. You go. It is Eidos Montreal. You're right. Yeah. So yeah, um, I wasn't expecting much from that, so that's why I'm saying like, oh, this is a surprise. 
it looks competent. And I didn't think they could do competent because I've seen otherwise. Um, I, I was mainly just happy to see like an actual single player focus, not like here's an online yeah. service game about Marvel. And they're like really pushing, at least from like the write ups I saw from PR speak and shit, that there is no microtransactions or like DLC planned yet for it. And that's kind of refreshing, even though I don't know that that's necessarily how it's going to end up in the end. You never know. Well, from what I understand, this isn't like in retaliation from Avengers. This game has been being worked on for like four yeah. years and it's always been planned this such. They didn't like change it totally. because so I, th I think it seems pretty safe. Sure. Yeah. Um, I put this in here because I was just like, oh, my God, really? A Plague Tale Requiem? Yeah. All right. I'll throw I'll okay. throw me into that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. Much like the Outer Worlds 2. I am shocked there's a sequel to this. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Game Pass is a perfect price for another Game one Pass, of those. Yeah. And speaking of the first Plague Tale, it's getting the new console update uh, early next month. Sure. Okay. And then um, the last one, I really wanted to play Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Original. I really need to see what that thing is. Okay. You're going to have to I... tell me why you're excited about this because i thought this looked like garbage this this is the chaos 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 trailer yep, right that's that nope, one yep, this is yeah no this is. i heard i heard the gameplay is actually pretty competent like it's it's team ninja and i heard it's all right i yeah i like team ninja games that from the little combat they showed which was like the thing that was like you should show more of like what the actual games like my dudes it looked like the type of game that i would like um and i need to see what the hell is going on with that and uh the whole like tie into final fantasy one or what they're doing with that so okay i didn't realize it was tied into final fantasy one well yeah no the, literally the guy in the trailer is is literally the final boss of final fantasy one yeah that's the guy you play that's why making a big deal out of it no the uh he calls himself is garland i yeah okay garland, garland is the final boss of final fantasy one basically yeah okay all right it's more to it than that, but yeah, basically, they're, they're, this is like a Final Fantasy retelling, essentially. Okay. Basically, when that trailer was going, I was just like joking around or whatever. It's like, yeah, whatever. This looks like it might be okay. And then they say his name. I'm like, oh, shit, what? What are they doing here? And it's like, they they don't tell you what they're doing there. They just say chaos a whole bunch. Uh, So, yeah, I'm keeping an eye on that for the future. But like, I guess, no. the boring answer yeah. is Elden Ring is my game of the show. So that's why I changed it up a little bit. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Also technically not E3, but oh, we'll allow Technic it. Yeah, technically. Technically. Okay, my list, uh, we've touched on everything except two of the games. Um, the first one is Inscription. Okay. Which came from... Um, Uh, Devolver's panel. Okay. Um, and it looks like a weird kind of deck building, kind of escape room looking thing. The art style was just awesome. Uh, it's also spelt kind of weird. It's it's like in script, like writing script shin. Um, so it's not spelt properly, uh, but it just had such a cool looking look to it. I'm going to kind of keep my eyes out for that. And I like I like card battlers and or whatever this thing's going to be. Um, so that, that was taking a lot of boxes. <clears throat> and the last game is Somerville or Somerville. Oh, okay. how we pronounce it. This is um, by an ex founder of Play Dead, making a new title. Um, Play Dead being the d company that did Inside and Limbo. And this looks kind of similar in terms of like tone and aesthetic. It looks dark and spooky and, and, and dreary. This is an area you don't want to be in. Um, and it just, you know, I really liked Inside. I really like Limbo. Um, so kind of getting to see what the what they're doing next. Not specifically Play Dead, but a lot of the uh, one of the main people on it. Uh, yeah, I, I am definitely in for that. Um, it, the art style made me think of Kentucky Route Zero quite a bit, uh, which also does good things for me. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that was my list. Cool. Let's run through some of these showcases and, and talk about everything that was shown. 
Starting with uh, Saturday, we had Xbox. And uh, they started off with Starfield. Paul, I'm assuming this uh, was big for you. Nope. They didn't show anything. What do I care? They showed a trailer. Dear. They showed a trailer of a dude of an astronaut for two, like 10 seconds. They did a vibe check, as Sean Booker would say. Yeah. So what was the vibe check on for you? Were you like, hell yeah, I'm down for Fallout in space? We don't even know that's what it is. <laughs> like, we know uh, nothing. Well, sorry. Todd Howard came out and said it's Skyrim in space. Right. But, like, that, it doesn't mean anything until I see gameplay. It looks neat, I guess. Like, I guess more than anything, it's cool to see that they're going with a semi realistic setting instead of a weird, uh, far future fantasy. Definitely does look grittier. It's not like kind of a space opera, like Mass Effect. It's. Yeah. Right. You know, you know pe people who watch The Expanse, great show. It kind of seems more like we're kind of realistic, down to earth, quote unquote. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> they showed Stalker 2, which doesn't do much for me. Oh, yeah. No, Stalker 2 was on my list, actually, of honorable mentions. I'm stoked for that game. Even though it looks like every other game, like Chernobylite and every other fucking game that takes place in a nuclear wasteland now. There's still something annoyingly special about throwing a bolt to an into an anomaly to like see where you can't step and yeah, this stuff about it looks very very cool to me. I want to see more of it. Uh, Back for Blood, one of the many, many yeah Left for Dead clones that I saw in the last week. I mean, I already know I'm going to get, I'm going to play this as soon as it's out, so I don't need to see more about it. I kind of skipped out on it. I feel like every company is making a Left 4 Dead like right now. Yep. But I mean, I like co op, so sure. Yep. But this is actually the original team, right? Or at least part of it. Yep. Yeah. They even says in the trailers from the people that brought you Left 4 Dead. Yeah, it's, it's <sighs> Turtle Rock, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. Game Pass, hell yeah. That's, that's true, yep. All right, Contraband, which I do not remember what Contraband is. I think wasn't this just a logo? Uh, I feel like it was. Oh no, I... this was the one that had like the something about like vampires and uh like the the lady like with magic around her hands or something like that. You're thinking of Redfall. Am I? Yeah, Probably. the one you were this like is... literally right. It is a basically a logo. <laughs> it's basically a logo. Yeah, it's something you're, about you're open correct. world. There's somebody this is Avalanche. Like... This is Avalanche Studios. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think what I heard is this is going to be possibly a co-op just cause. Like, okay, if that's true. That sounds awesome. Sounds, yeah, fine to me. Um, what doesn't sound awesome is Sea of Thieves. There's now a Jack Sparrow expansion coming. Let's be real. This makes a lot of fucking sense. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it had to happen sooner or later. Totally. Yep. Um. I just I, I just wasn't really expecting I wasn't prepared for it is what I guess I should say. Sure. Fair. Um Yakuza like a dragon got put on Game Pass, so now all the Yakuza is on Game Pass. Um Hell yeah, man. I dove back and played a couple hours of Yakuza Zero. You just gotta continue to slow it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon mm -hmm. to get through these seven games. True. Yep. Uh, they showed some more Battlefield, which we had seen before. Some expansions coming to Fallout 76. I'm just going to go through these until you guys are interested in something. Somerville, which I talked about. Uh, we got the multiplayer reveal for Halo Infinite. Apparently it's free to play this time around. Yep, that had been announced before that the multiplayer was going to be free to play, um, which is pretty interesting to think about, like... So it's going to be Game Pass. So technically it's free for anyone who has Game Pass, but I would assume you're going to be able to buy Halo Infinite, like maybe a boxed copy or something. Are you just buying the campaign? Who would spend full price on just the campaign? For Halo? Probably a decent amount, but it's probably a case where like you get the online multiplayer well and you get like extra bonus content for that. I bet they're going to have to pack in some bonus content because if the multiplayer is free and all you're really paying for is that campaign... So, I don't know. It seems like it's, there's going to be kind of a weird price per whatever equation when it comes to that game. But we'll see. It looks goofy and fun. A lot of grappling hook stuff going on in that. So I would only buy the campaign if I was given the option to. If I could save money. 
Okay. But it's on Game Pass, so you don't have to. Right. We're already saving money. Woo! Hooray! Hooray! Uh, they showed some more Diablo 2 uh, Resurrected. Yep. Gave and a date for it. It was Street Day 2, I believe, yeah. Hmm? Yes, uh, September 23rd. Uh, Plague Tale Requiem, the sequel to a game that not enough people played. I think this game is ripe for like the first one was good. The second one, if they just fix everything from the first one, will be really great. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Showed some more Far Cry 6. Far Cry 6, along with Monster Hunter Stories 2, was like the most trailers I saw in the last week. They just, yeah. they just kept popping up. Both need to <laughs> fuck like, off. Nobody cares. Go away. Like every second one of these live streams, I would get a trailer for these games. Totally. Yep. Slime Far Cry 6 looks two. bad. And I'm the one, I think, out of all of us that likes Far Cry. <laughs> Far Cry 6 looks like Far Cry to me. It looks bad. Slime Rancher 2 looked delightful, though. Looks, looks like uh, Slime Rancher. Yeah. Shredders, which is a, a snowboarding game coming to Game Pass. That looked kind of neat. Yeah, looked like a PS2 sure, yeah. game. I'm in. <laughs> Can't remember the last that... time I played a snowboarding game. I guess it was steep, and I didn't play much of it. Right. Who did the Who did the last amped game? Because like it's been years since we've had an amped game. Is this supposed to be oh. like a spiritual successor? I forget. I don't think so. Or was this the one? What game is it that had? No, I'm thinking of something from Ubisoft. Never mind. Don't mind me. Anything amped steep? No, there's a game that's coming out that someone said is what Steep should have been, and it was also for skateboarding. Okay. Uh, replaced. I don't remember what Replaced is. That is the uh, pixely side-scrolling adventure-looking type thing. I don't know if that helps at all. There's de I'm looking through the trailer. There's definitely combat to this. This looks real cool. Yeah. Um, but Sure. Looks neat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks nice. Um, does anyone know what you you did in Chronicle? Is? A you did Chronicle Rising or whatever. I don't know. This seems to be like their answer to. I don't the tales of games or something like we need to do a Japanese style RPG series. So we're let's, getting tales of a rise on Xbox. Yeah, I don't really know. I guess like that that market is still not fully saturated yet is this, is this a series john do you know this series like or is this a I new thing i feel like i've heard the name but i feel like i'm imagining it and filling something else in like this could be like ease to me where it's just like oh yeah these have been around forever and there's 40 of apparently them. it's a successor to suikoden oh okay. shit is this the kickstarted game from last year from yes, the original creator is. yeah it is that's what it, it is. is yeah that's exactly what it is okay yeah so, cool. so this is this is the uh, Suikoden team and their new kickstarted game. That's why the name sounded familiar. Cool. Okay. I'm amazed they actually had a trailer there. I thought that thing was... When did this even end? I'm trying to figure out when this Kickstarter ended. Uh, June 13th last year. Oh, I guess it's been about a year. Man, last year was a... Show. What a year. <laughs> Not, nothing makes sense right now. <laughs> I uh, showed a game called The Ascent. Yeah, this comes out soon. I'm stoked about this. This is a uh, kind of isometric top-down shooter in a cyberpunk world. Isn't this co-op and it's about like climbing in a, t a tower? I think so. Oh, this does look neat. Yeah, I'm seeing like a group of four people. Yeah, and it says team up right there. So this does look kind of cool. It ma made me think of there was another isometric kind of like brawler that I played a little while back that the, the imagery was like real bright red and like a people guy in a mask ruiner you know what i'm saying think, ruiner it makes yeah. me think of ruiner yep but like yep. better looking i don't know i had problems sure. with ruiner yep. i haven't seen ruiner in a while it's just that's what popped into my head sure yeah uh this article's then saying that age of empires 4 got a new trailer but they didn't link the tra oh they linked it later on okay age of empires 4 is still coming sure Neat. that's october yep. yep outer worlds 2 which we talked about Here's the Microsoft Flight Simulator that says will launch on Xbox Series S and S on July 27th. Yeah, Top Gun. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and there's a Top Gun expansion coming. Sure, that seems makes goofy. sense. It makes yep. sense. Totally. Yeah. So Horizon Five is coming November 9th, and it's set in Mexico, which I thought was not going to be the case last week. So I was wrong about that. That so. When I reread that, I was just like, oh, yeah, there was a rumor about this. So I guess that was correct. Uh, yep. I also didn't think it because you're right. I remember the there was also a rumor about Japan for years. That's what I remembered. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, um, this looked great. This looks It looks real nice. It looks yeah. super pretty. Lots of different biomes. Honestly, it just made me think like Dirt 5 was great. And if anyone's like champing at the bit yeah. for like a real good racer that looks fantastic on the Xbox, Dirt Five is on Game Pass. Yeah. Um, or play the other four Forza, Forza Horizons or the other seven Forza Motorsports. Yeah. Right? And so what I found out apparently we were t talking like shouldn't it be Motorsports turn because they go back yeah. and forth. I guess the most recent the next Motorsport got like completely rebooted. Oh, Ooh. I see. Oh, right, because seven had seven had some complaints when it came out about. I guess the there was a bunch of microtransaction stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, also, okay. maybe when you're seven into a franchise, you want to do something new. Mm. Well, I thought that's what Horizon was supposed to be, basically. Um, I'm excited. I love the Horizon series, so I'm I'm definitely down for that. Looks great. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one, their big one thing left was Redfall, a new um game from Arcane Austin. I I want to see the gameplay in action for this for sure. This yeah, looks this, neat. This was pretty cinematic, involving like vampires. Look, the the key art makes me think there's some kind of co-op element to it. Yeah. But um, looks good in Arcane. I mean, they do great work. So. Yep. They then said the Xbox Mini fridge is going to be available to the public later. I this can't year. believe I can't believe they're making that real. That's Are you going to get one, John? No, oh, what do I? Need? I don't need a mini fridge. I'm just you need an museum. Xbox mini <laughs> fridge, though. <laughs> That's the question. We're gonna keep it'll your hold all. It'll have all do. my Brita, all my Britas I keep around <laughs> yeah, the house. There you go. Let's talk about Ubisoft. All right. We started with a started with a big gameplay reveal for Extraction. Sure. Which looks like a more tactical Left 4 Dead. Um, it actually involved like being quiet and kind of going slow. I'm kind of curious if that's needed or if they were just kind of doing that to like up the tension of the trailer. It's needed. I've been in. I did a closed beta for this. It. Okay. This. It, I can't believe they're selling this for full price. That's a ripoff. That made me Ooh, pretty mad bad, to find huh? out. Well, oh, it's weird. fine. Okay. It just seems like it should be a side mode because it's exactly what they showed <laughs> and that's kind of it one thing that seemed kind of interesting is they were talking about like you have to go in and save some of the like um operators to like unlock them essentially yeah yeah that seems kind of cool to me um i'm i'm looking forward to this i you know i like co-op shooters so I, I played siege so yeah, this is pushing a lot of the checking a lot of the boxes i need sure um Rocksmith Plus. It is back as a subscription service. Yeah, not uh, crazy about the subscription thing, but I thought this looked neat. I like Rocksmith, except it doesn't work well on my computer for whatever reason. Uh, so I'd be interested in playing a new one of those that works on even my phone, apparently. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't do Rocksmith, but this just seems like a slam dunk. Of course, it's going to be a subscription service. There's plenty of other like music license subscription yeah. services for learning things. It kind of so, makes like, why not? the most sense too, with just the whole like having to license music and licenses running out. It goes off your ser like for them. It yeah. just makes complete business sense to do it that way. Yep. Uh, they showed more Riders Republic. Which, uh, I yawn. mean, it seems like a game I will try. Yeah, it seems when, extremely goofy. When they have the free weekend, I will have an amazing time with it for one night and yeah. then never think about it again. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't this, know. This was the game I was confusing it, uh, the other game with. This is gotcha. kind of like the spiritual successor to Steep that's not yeah. on snowy stuff. I think there actually is snowboarding in this as well, though. Actually, I do see a snowboarder. Yeah, there's snowboarding. Um, yeah, this is kind of everything. This is all the X games, including like wingsuits and just complete nonsense. Um, yeah. That what's that other Ubisoft game 
about the like rollerblading in the circle kind of basketball thing. Did that come out? Uh, remember what I'm talking about? It did not yeah, come out. It's had multiple like test weekends where people have played yeah. it. Uh, okay. Roller something. Fuck. It's like a weird roller derby game. Yeah. Yeah. But with a ball, right? There's definitely like a ball and a hoop. Isn't there? Roller you, champions. Roller don't champions. you go through the hoop or something like that? I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I don't remember either. I heard it's good. It's still slated for this year, apparently. Yeah. I guess they said something about Ghost Recon Breakpoint that I've completely forgotten. There's a new Just Dance coming. Of course. Of course there is. Right. We talked yeah. a little bit about some of the Valhalla DLC. It sounds like there's not a new Assassin's Creed coming this year. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, and then they showed some Far Cry 6, and then they ended on Mario and Rabbids. Oh, actually, no, they did not. And they talked about Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, and I had forgot that Ubisoft was making an Avatar game. Yeah. Yeah. How long has it been since the I mean, movie? 2011? No, that movie was 2009 or 10. It was my How last was year. far back? Jeez. It was last, my last year of high school. There's still four more of those movies planned. Yeah, planned, sure. Like, there's a there's a solid chance you'll be dead before the Avatar storyline finishes. I sincerely hope there's I solid am. solid chance I'll be dead before the next Avatar movie comes out. You'll never get to know what happens. Think about that. I don't know how I'll sleep at night, but I'll be yeah. dead, so I won't have to worry about that. The thing about um, this that pisses me off is that we're getting these weird, like, changes to the division and it's probably because the division team is working on this pile of shit so awesome you think so because there's a lot of division stuff coming i feel like they'd be pretty busy there's isn't there like three different division things plus the movie plus like a book yeah but it's probably different people like the people that do the division are working on this that studio i mean we always saw with cinematics we have no gameplay. I'm kind of I'm just kind of curious what, what you'll do in this. Yeah, you can kind of see like the different units and stuff. And if you get to like fly around on top of one of those glidey things, shooting arrows like that, could, that, could, that could be fun. You'll probably climb to the top of a tree to survey the area, jump off onto like one of those flying dinos or something. I mean, that sounds cool to me. To be fair, when I think back to Avatar, the only thing I can remember is the word unobtainium. Yeah, so, same here. Okay, yeah. I remember it like a long brain time. jacking or whatever they called it. That mech sure. pulls a knife out at one point, and that was a cool scene. Sure. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I just need to see more before, before kind of yeah. judging. Um, let's talk about Devolver. They yeah. had, uh, once again, just an absolute batshit crazy uh, presentation. Yeah. At one point the lady had two muscly people carrying her around and feeding her grapes. They ripped the sleeves off of her suit jacket. She put way too much hand sanitizer all over her arms and then started eating chili cheese dogs while spouting absolute nonsense about microtransactions or subscription models or something. Um, I, out of all the press conferences, this is the one you really should go to YouTube and watch the archive of, because it is just a treat uh, the it's whole time. Fun. Also, the it games just... that they showed look dope. Yeah, let's go through some of the games. Shadow Warrior 3. Yeah, I mean, I'm just waiting for that to come out. I didn't need to see more about it, but sure. This just looks like Doom. I, well, yeah, it's Shadow Warrior. <laughs> it's just that. Um, Trek to, y to Yomi? Yeah, uh, this looked Tower awesome. Side scrolling, like almost uh, Ghost of Tsushima type, like uh, you're a samurai, yeah, beautiful lots of, Japanese like, buildings. story based thing. I'm into this. That. Is in grayscale the whole time. I was thinking to myself though, like, would this be as interesting if it wasn't in grayscale, or are we being tricked? Uh, I mean, I like side scrolling, just like action adventure games. So I would still probably be into it. Phantom Abyss. I don't even remember this one. So Phantom this Abyss. Is the one, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Paul, you got this. Yeah, no, this is a oh, uh, yeah. first person dungeon diving type thing where you are racing to the end of uh, temples against other people. The whole shtick behind it is that the temples are completely randomized. And once you finish it, that iteration of the temple is gone. 
Right, and there's like ghosts of the other people you're running against. So yes. it's kind of an asynchronous. Yeah, because you only get there. one life. If you die, you can never attempt that temple again. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, so this did look all right. This mm -hmm. next game has just a fantastic name. Yeah. Like, holy smokes. This game is called Wizard with a Gun, which I love that. That's That just puts like a really great image in my head that makes me smile. Uh, this looks like a dual joystick shooter. Um this looks like Don't like Starve, it. if anybody's ever played Don't Starve, but like with Magicka in it, and that is awesome. Yeah, I feel it looks a little more detailed don't than Don't that. Starve, but yeah, the isometric, yeah, I could see it. Well, um, I mean, it's a survival game, right? You're building and like upgrading your stuff. How are you? Okay. I mean, I'm less interested now, but the name is still really powerful. The name is me. great. <laughs> it's a such great a name. name. It is such a great name. Death's Door was the next one. Which one was this one? Oh, Death's Door is another isometric type, almost like twin joystick looking game, but it plays more like a Zelda game by the looks of it. Looks pretty goofy. Yeah, this thing also pretty looks fast pretty paced. cool. Fast it, paced, um, yeah. Honestly, the look kind of makes it... I was going to say blow at first, but no, this is too colorful. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> This looks good, though. Yeah, I'm into it. Here's here's inscription. This is the one I was talking about. You, I, you, you should definitely kind of look at this trailer. The art style is pretty wild. I really don't even know how to describe it other than it's like some weird card based escape room looking thing. Yeah, this just looks so cool and unique. That's the thing about it that like everything about this looks cool, except I don't want a card game. Like I just want I need to know how much of the card game there is, I guess. I'm probably going to play it, so. Uh, there's a mobile game they showed called Tumble Time that I personally don't think looks good. It looks like that Pokemon Cafe game, but um, it, the trailer is pretty funny, so I'm hoping there's kind of some of that humor is in this game. Sure, yeah. Death Throttle. This was an interesting game. Um, at one point, that guy says, that demon kissed my wife, and that's hilarious. That's just a that's a great line for a cowboy to say. Oh, um, yeah, this one. So I'll say this. They at the end of this, they said this game will never be sold digitally, which means I'll never buy it. So I don't care. Such a and and it's I understand they got like hounded on Twitter for that, uh, which kind of makes sense. I, I'm surprised they would go this route, specifically Devolver, a company that like works with small games where they're literally called devolver digital <laughs> yeah i mean like a lot of the games they work with are Good like point. yeah it's it's not going to work unless we get this out to as many people as possible we're going to work with indie games of course there's never going to be a physical for this these are so small also the entire premise of their uh, e3 presentation was making fun of weird like marketing methods and like ways that people sell video games and do stuff on the internet and then they kind of are pulling this stunt I don't know. But I don't know. Like, it it looks neat. If you're a person that like will buy physical, I this looks awesome. I will not be buying this. I'm not going to go through the rigmarole for this. I think they did say like they're going to make as many as they're ordered. It's not going to be limited. Yeah, sure. But it's yeah. still just like, it's what's the point? Reserved. Like, why? I don't understand like why why you wouldn't also then sell it digital like there's going to be plenty of places where it's like we just don't have the infrastructure or like the game stores nearby well if it's through special reserve it's probably promotional for them specifically and not like necessarily much else i would assume yeah the pre-order window for for this game is june 12th to october 13th oh i didn't even know that they're okay yeah I guess that makes sense. Yeah. O only physical, never digital. That's Honestly, it, it's yeah, it's weird. It makes me think like they're just trying to like get a headline by like, doing something weird. Mm. Like, I mean, we we talked about this game longer than a lot of the other games because there was something weird involved with it. So maybe we're the suckers. Maybe. I mean, Special Reserve has done a lot of work with them in the past, like disc rooms, getting a physical through them, ape out. Like, a lot of Devolver Digital stuff is here. Because Special better, Reserve yeah. only does physical, right? Like, them, that's their yes. thing. Yeah, I think yeah, this they is do, a promotion they do for them. They do physical versions of digital games. Like, I see the Messenger, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. 
they're, yeah. they're kind of like a limited run. Right. Yeah, another yeah. one of those. Yeah. Okay, that was Devolver. Let's talk about a little bit about Square. Square had a pretty short uh, press conference, and half of it was Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, yeah. Yeah. They did show Stranger of Paradise, Final Fantasy Origin, which we, we mentioned earlier. Um, and Guardians of the Galaxy, they spent a lot of time on. Yeah. They did a small update for Avengers. Some Black Panther stuff is coming. Uh, they showed Babylon's Fall, which it's, I could not be less interested in this game. Yeah, I kind of so This agree. is platinum, right? I mean, seeing people say this is platinum. Yeah, I don't know. I need I guess I need to you know, find live service game and platinum. I don't love that combo myself, but we'll see what happens. Wasn't this the very first PS5 game announced? Remember, it was I on think. the game. It was the Game Awards that was they it announced this or the Godfall. Series. Well, Godfall was the first, but it was also oh. announced. Oh, it maybe it had been Godfall. <laughs> I remember whatever it was, it was during the Game Awards that that was definitely Godfall. That um, where Keeley announced the Series X because I remember he got the Series X reveal and he got the first PS5 game reveal, and I, I guess it was one of the Fall games. I can't remember which one. Babylon's Fall Sounds could like... be cool, but I don't know yet myself. It just seems like such a just like no name like it's gonna just pass by it'll just be another one of those like random like totally forgettable games to me but maybe i'm wrong who knows yeah we'll see uh final fantasy pixel remaster there's a series of uh the first six final fantasy games getting remastered in some way they barely talked about this on no steam real... and mobile as soon as i saw steam that i was just mobile. like the monkey's paw clenches <laughs> yeah so it's many a... people were freaking out about this they're like put it on a fucking console <laughs> it's not a collection of the six no they didn't no. talk about what they're doing to remaster them in any way nope nothing yep it barely showed any of this so who knows what that could be they showed a bit more life is strange true colors which i'm very excited for and they mentioned the remaster again they mentioned Legend of Mana remaster is coming um, in a couple weeks. She one week from today. Yeah, it's really soon. Uh, oh, they, there's a near game coming to mobile. OK, yeah. Reincarnation. I think this was known for a while, though. Yeah, this yeah, is out in Japan some, already. They did some kind of mobile updates. They're making another Hitman sniper game. I like those games. That's I'm into that. Okay, I, I'm more of a Hitman Go fan when it comes to my mobile Hitman. So talk to me when there's a Hitman Go 2. So never. That's all I gotta say. Gotcha. We will never talk again. I'll miss you. Uh, <laughs> that was pretty much Square Enix, so let's talk about Nintendo, and then I can go to sleep. <laughs> um, they started with uh, Tekken's Kazuya being added to Smash. Uh, yeah, so uh, great. Tekken, <laughs> Tekken was the character that was called like a, a character from Tekken was called a mile away because like Bandai, yeah. Nam Bandai Namco's help with development of the last two Smash games. Sure. I thought this trailer was pretty great. Throwing Get everybody into the volcano. Everyone in the volcano, Kirby not getting great. in the lava. I thought it was all very funny. Yep. Um, there were so many people of like my friends group just being like, I don't know who this is. Uh, what I don't, I'm sure it's I don't know what this guy is, and it's just like, guys, play a play a fighting game, get like at least one more fighting game. <laughs> sure, yeah. Um, some Life is Strange, the remaster, and True Colors are coming to Switch. Guardians of the Galaxy is also coming to Switch. That'll be a cloud version of that game. Oh, I didn't see that part. Yeah, I didn't see that either. Okay. Um, because there's no way that game would run very well on the Switch. Right. I'm going to take this moment to mention Nintendo did not announce a Switch Pro. True. Again. Yeah. Which I was pretty surprised about. I, I I thought that would have been a slam dunk. We've been getting rumors for like months. We've been getting rumors for years, dude. There's no fucking way. I mean, it's got to happen sooner or later. There's eventually and, there well, will be Well, at that point, then it's the Switch 2. Sure. I yeah. think they should... They, I mean, I'm on the, the party that should believes it should be called the Super Switch. Okay, but it's probably going to be called the new Switch. Unfortunately, <laughs> the Switch XL, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um. What else is on here? Uh, Super Monkey Ball Collection is coming. 
Super Monkey Ball, Banana Mania. This, I think, uh, leaked a day or two before the show. Yeah. I was less interested when I saw this was just a remaster. As soon as they showed some of those maps. I mean, uh, considering some of the new ones people have not been liking, this might actually be the wisest decision they've made in a while. Yeah, it's definitely a money decision for sure. See, interesting. Speaking of unwise uh, money decisions, oh Mario God. Party Superstars was announced. So we are. I mean, just, I'm excited for this, but yeah, we are just, just, just going to pass of... by Cruise and Blast, huh? Like nobody cares. <laughs> oh, right. that's the list I'm I'm on. That's later. Is it? It's part of oh. a montage at yeah. some point. It, it was part of a montage, and that was, because it didn't have a trailer, yeah, I, I've been skipping a lot of the text. Oh, I'm using okay. E3 Recap, and that's like a three games from now. Okay. Let me finish talking about the great game that is Mario Party Superstars for all the fans of Mario Party out there. This will have a few of the boards from a few of the first couple Mario yeah. Parties. Five boards from the first three Mario Party games, a mini game collection smattering between the N64 and GameCube ones, online multiplayer... Uh, with the actual ability to save, unlike the one on Super Mario Party, and uh, generally looks like what Mario Party Top 100 actually should have been. So uh, Mario Party fans are excited for this one. Yeah. And doesn't I'm, look I'm, like it's going to have motion you. controls. I'm happy for you. Um, okay, I'll, I'll scroll back up. Uh, and a few smaller game announcements, including Two Point Campus is coming, Just Dance is coming, Worms Rumble is also coming, Astria Ascending, which I hadn't heard about before, that's coming. New Cruisin' Blast. Again, they showed like five seconds of this game. That's coming. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is coming, which I understand is a bad game. Is it? It's okay. not bad. It's just kind of meh. Because mm. they're they're selling it being all about Goku, and then you, like you spend apparently a sizable chunk of it not playing as Goku. Hey, I mean, as a Dragon Ball Z fan, there's some characters that are not Goku that are pretty cool. So that's Gohan? not a bad thing. Because I heard you play a lot of Gohan. Gohan is very cool. Really? Compared to Vegeta and Trunks? I'm not saying he's the coolest, but I will <laughs> say he is the main focus of my favorite Dragon Ball Z episode. So yeah, Gohan is pretty okay. cool. I definitely thought you were going to say fanfic for a section there. Yeah, I kind of did too, honestly. I asked you to not bring up my f Dragon Ball Z <laughs> fanfic on the show numerous times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Metroid Dread, which everyone's excited for. Woo! Um, or it will be the most exciting thing out of the Nintendo press conference, I think. I think so. Yeah. Um, right underneath WarioWare, of course, because we all respect Wario. Uh, appropriately. As you should. Yeah, as you should, yep. Can't wait for a new Wario. Also, WarioWare is going to be like um, a bit of a cheaper game. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It's 10 bucks in my pocket. I'm going to sell a sandwich. You get yourself a copy of WarioWare, get it together, and a sandwich, you're having yourself a great Friday night. That's all I got to say about that. Shimagami Tensei 5 is coming November 12th. Nice to get a release date for that and a proper trailer. Yeah. The uh, Danganronpa games are being collected and as well as expanded. I guess there was a board game as part yeah. of the third game that is now a full fledged game that is being collected on the Switch. That was like a great yeah. collection. Reese, I... Reese screamed when she saw this. She was so excited. I'll probably jump in finally with this. Fatal Frame is coming to the Switch. I understand it's the fifth one. This is a port yeah. of the, I believe, Wii U one. Yeah, it's it's the port but of the this last is, one. This is coming to multiple released. platforms. It is, it's yeah. going to all platforms. Yep, this is exciting. Low-key, one of the better announcements nobody's talking about. So that's cool. Uh, we've talked about the Advance Wars 1 plus 2 reboot camp. Uh, yeah. Which I'm looking forward to, and that's coming this December. They then ended with a chunk of Zelda, including Hyrule Warriors. Yeah, some expansion that DLC stuff is starting this in June. They mentioned that Skyward Sword still exists. Yep, HD version. Uh, and then they they then showed a Zelda game and watch for Zelda's 35th anniversary. Hell yeah, baby! I already got mine ordered. Okay, you gonna stream that? You gonna get no, some capture can't. off that bad boy? Can't. I'm good. Okay. I just wanted it. I love the Game of Watches. I love collecting them. Okay. This one, at least you get more than just one game. Or, yeah, no, you last three. One two, right? mm -hmm. are, you, are you not counting clock? <laughs> no, well, this one gets four then. My bad. Yeah, we, <laughs> respect, we respect clock. No, no the last one had Mario 1, Lost Levels, and Ball. 
This one has Zelda 1, Zelda 2, Link's Awakening, and... Oh, shoot. What was it? Was it Mole or Hammer? I forget what they called it. Wasn't it called, like, Terrain? Ter- and something like that. I can never remember the Link the reskin games. of Terrain plus... Yeah. Which is weird, because there is a Legend of Zelda Game & Watch. I don't know why they just didn't put that on there. Probably because it was two screens, but still. Maybe they're going to resell that one to you later. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I understand the packaging doubles as a stand for it. I don't know. I've not heard. I didn't hear that part. I heard that. So, there you go. There's a little bonus for you. Um, they showed Breath of the Wild 2, another trailer. It said part of the new stuff uh, is going to be involving the sky. A uh, hundred links are going to drop down onto Hyrule. Yep. They're going to take the, what it, the battle glider. Yeah, that's kind of what it looked like. Um, that wouldn't be terrible. Honestly, they could make that work, I bet. Especially Probably. if you had like, you could pick up like motorcycles or horses kind of ride around. There's something there. Anyways, um, it looks like there's like some sky islands. They showed a bit of some powers. It looks like there's kind of like a time rewinding power, something about going through walls kind of power. They didn't really talk about much. Um, they said it's coming 2022. And that was yeah. E3. Yeah. So we mentioned some of our top things. I was pretty excited about it. Lots of cool stuff coming in Game Pass. Yeah. Um, at this point, typically, I would ask for questions, but this episode's long enough, so we're going to skip the questions, and I want to know what your guys' game of the week is. Ratchet and <clears throat> Clank. Um, I'll give it to Nier. Not far enough in Rabbids yet. Cool. I'm going to give it to Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, since uh, I won't be playing that anymore. Before I do the full sign-off, though, let's get some just, like, concluding thoughts uh, on E3. John, start. Meh. Okay. Probably the weakest E3 in ages, but obviously pandemic extremely caused this. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Paul? Man, why did Gearbox even have a thing? Or like Capcom? What the they, fuck? They had, yeah. Uh, you know what? That's another thing. I feel like the ESA kind of forced some companies to be like, yo, we need we need content. Totally. Show off what you got. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. A lot of this smack of like, we just had to fill, we had spots to fill. We gave them a discount. Like, I heard the ESA actually like bungled this really hard to a point where I think they leaked more addresses again this year. Yeah. Uh, there was like a bunch of other complaints I saw going around. I was just like, how do you fuck this up again so bad? But I oh, guess man. without a physical location, I guess I can see why they wouldn't have the control they normally have. Yeah. Well, they did have a, a location. Like I said, there there was uh, a few different uh, journalist publications down there hosting kind of the E3 show. Like if you were following twitch.tv slash E3, I was kind of constantly doing stuff. Um, they did have a physical presence for, for at least those kind of streams. Um, like IGN sent people, GameSpot sent people. Golden Boy was there. Yeah, was, he was. was. Several people there. Yeah. Um, yeah, part of it's I'm wondering like if the ESA they must have given some kind of discount. And I wonder if it's a lot of companies like having shareholders being like, "Well, you do an E3 conference every year. It will not look good if you don't do one now." Um yeah. or if it's a lot of companies being like, "Well, hey, if we do it this year, then maybe next year when there is a full E3, we'll kind of be in their good books because we stuck with them, so we'll get to keep our slot." Yeah. I bet it was a lot of companies kind of feeling like at a necessity that they had to do it. Um, Totally. I agree. Uh, I guess like my actual final thought is if there was any reason you weren't getting Game Pass, like this should help, I think. So much good shit is coming to Game Pass for... This is basically how I'm just going to play video games from now on, (laughs) essentially. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a reason the Xbox is like my primary console. Like you just save so much money. I, by doing Game Pass, if you're interested in, in these games. Um, it's good. Yeah, the next 18 months are going to look real cool. I'm glad to see that there are definitely some games coming out this year, though. Like, we have Mario Golf in a, in a week or yeah, two. Yeah, I'm excited for that. 
Yeah. Warrior wear that that's a pretty exciting Forza. I'm really looking forward to. They finally gave a, a um a release date for 12 minutes. Like there is stuff coming out this year, and and that's that's nice to see as well. Yeah. Um. All right, and the last thing to everyone to keep in mind: our Shantae episode of TDP Plus is live, so go check that out if you haven't already. The poll for July is uh, up. Uh, you can go vote on what we will be playing throughout July. Um, I think next week is supposed to be our TDP Plus episode of Bug Fables that we still need to discuss about. Um, and also in the Discord, uh, I set up a live events channel. A bunch of us were in there talking about E3. I'll keep it E3 related probably for the remainder of the weekend. Um, but there's now a, a dedicated channel in the Discord where whenever there's like a live stream, that's a cool place to kind of gather and watch it and, and chat about it together. Uh, and it worked pretty well for E3. So come join us over there. But until then, we will see you guys next week. Bye. See you, everybody.